Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Nikki Free. I'm back with another video and I want to talk about, of course, the shy this week. Oh my God. Okay, so I just, when the show opened up, um, I was already just anxious just because of everything that happened last week and I just couldn't wait to find out like what was going to happen with Keisha this whole season. I'm like, I want Keisha to live. I want Keisha to be okay. And I've just been so concerned. And when I saw that disgusting man laying next to her and just the look on her face, first of all, the actress is that plays Keisha is extremely talented. I mean, she made me feel her pain. I felt like, I felt what she felt being next to that disgusting man that was next to her. And um, it just broke my heart, you know, seeing her there. And for a moment, I just felt like, damn, is this her fate? Is she going to be stuck with this man? I mean, what is going on here? And as you guys could see, as it progressed, I think in her mind, she was thinking the same thing, like, I can't live like this because you see she kind of put the noose above the bed and it looks like she was about to try to take herself out. And then, you know, oh, thank God she didn't, okay? Um, and it didn't work out that way. But um, backtrack a little bit. When he was next to her, I could just feel her just being disgusted and just like at her wit's end. And you saw when he went to go get the breakfast, she prepared, you know, she just like, oh, I got it. She went into like mode of, I have to do something. And I mean, just everything, just, uh, before I even go there, I want to talk about how he said, oh, we had a long night last night. I guess that's why you didn't wake me up. When he said he overslept and he just kind of like, was like we had a last night. It's just like made my flesh crawl when he said we had a long night last night because I can only imagine what he did to that poor girl. You know, just, I, I mean, I can only imagine. I know it was just pure torture for her. So just the thought of that, you know, just like putting myself in her shoes and how hard something like that would be it was just like, oh, it was so overwhelming, just that whole scene and just uh, everything. And then when he left to get the food, I just looked at the fact that she still had that tracksuit on and how psycho this guy is that he, keep, he keeps her in this tracksuit. I mean, like, that's the only thing she wears is a tracksuit. So I'm hoping that they will open up a little bit more development into this guy's character. Like, where did he come from? How long has he been watching her? Like, who is he? We know some, I saw his trophies in the last episode. So we know he is some kind of sports person, but what else? Who is this guy? You know? And, um, when she, when he came back, well, when he went to get the food and she broke the chair so she could have something to hit him with, it just made me think about just women and just how, you know, most of the time men are so much stronger than us because she took that stick and she, when she hit him with the, well, with the chair, it was a, it was actually the leg of the chair, but when she hit him, it was like a love tap. But in my mind, I knew that that was all she had. But, you know, for him, being a man, being so much bigger, stronger, it's like, it was like a love tap. He's like, what are you doing? And just like, it, it didn't even really faze him. And she hit him with all her might. And that just broke my heart because I'm like, dang, that's going to, you know, like, I'm sure she feels even more defeated. So, yeah, that, that scene really got to me. And it really was like tough. It just, ooh, that scene really, really, really got to me. Anyway, moving along, I want to talk about Emmett. Emmett, Emmett, Emmett. Emmett and Lala. I'm not going to do, and just so you guys know, I'm just going to do a brief overview of the highlights um, that I really, that really stood out to me because I don't want this video to be too long. But um, yeah, so Emmett, Emmett and Lala, listen, 
the chemistry's there. Um, Lala clearly was kind of feeling him. She, he was feeling her. I mean, it was inevitable that something was going to happen, but I didn't see it happening the way it did. I, I just pictured it a little differently. But so Lala and Emmett ended up hooking up. Well, Lala's character in Emmett. But here's the thing. I thought it was really funny. Prior to that, they decided that they were going to go and try to take over Sunny Space. And then they had Laurel. Laurel's character, um, he, I don't, I don't know. I guess he was the person that was the landlord or something. And he decided that he wasn't going to let Lala and Emmett take Sonny's place. Because this guy had grew up, you know, on Sonny's chicken. And he decided, no. I'm not gonna let you, I'm not gonna let you guys take over his spot. I just want to say, wow, that's like really not indicative of how things would go. <laughs> I just, I mean, maybe you know, one in a million chance, but most likely he would have taken their offer because people are greedy and you know, especially business people like that. And plus, Sunny can't pay the rent. That part was a little bit mm, okay. But I just want to say, like, it's two parts of that. It seemed like, yeah, right, like that would really happen. But then also another part of me felt like, oh, that's so awesome that he actually has some love for the neighborhood and actually, you know, decided that he's going to put, you know, the person that's been in the neighborhood forever uh, before, you know, money. So that was something. But I still say if Sonny can't pay the rent, how, many, how much longer he's gonna let, is he going to let Sonny just stay there? But, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But, anyways, back to Lala and Emin hooking up. I knew it was going to happen. Um, it wasn't as smooth as I thought it would be. It was okay, you know? Um, I felt like, I feel like Lala is not that great of an actress. So, with the scene, it was just kind of, like, odd. Um, I, of course, Emin did a good job. But I felt like with Lala's part, it was just kind of, like, a little bit awkward. But whatever so they looked up and okay so now what's going to happen with him and tiff you know it's just like oh lord if tiff finds out about this and i know the whole thing with tiff is she wants him to do the right thing but i feel like tiff should know by now that emmett is just emmett you know <laughs> so it's kind of like oh that's tough but she has a lot of people that I feel, you know, like she definitely could get with someone else, but she just genuinely loves him. And he is the father of her son. So this is about to get messy. And then I was thinking, what if Lala gets pregnant? Oh, now that would be a plot twist. Because imagine, I mean, how is that going to work out? So we'll see what happens with him and Lala. I have the feeling that Lala is going to be kind of emotional and going to get a little attached to him. I don't know. I just have this feeling something's going to happen with that where it's not going to turn out well at all. I don't think it's just going to be like a hookup and then, okay, that's it. We're going to keep this to ourselves and keep moving. Definitely don't think it's going to go over that easily. Anyway, let's move on to Ronnie, Rusty Ronnie. Ronnie, you know what? Ronnie, you know, he, I feel like, has been trying to get his footing and has been trying to, you know, fix his reputation for years. I mean, like, since this show started. And he finally sees that he may have the opportunity. Um, I like the scene with him and his friends in the bar, the two friends that he's had, um, I don't know if those guys are junkies or alcohol. I don't know what his friends are. I know, like, a couple seasons back, they seemed more like, in the, like, earlier seasons, it seemed like they were more like junkies um, or alcoholics or something. But I feel like now they look a little bit different, like they've, like, kind of cleaned themselves up. And anyway, they were in the bar talking, and they let Ronnie know that they're moving to Springfield. I believe it was Springfield because one of them had a relative that was um, going to hook them up with jobs. And Ronnie, you could just see the hurt, you know, in his heart. I mean, he just lost his grandmother. He had just said how, like, those guys were his friends. They were always there for him. 
you know, even in his dark times, those were the ones that were down for him. So you could just tell that he was really hurt that they were leaving him. And they offered him to come as well, you know. So they do seem like decent friends, especially just like with the life they let, they seem to have led. Um, they seem like they are loyal and good friends. And so I, I guess that's why Ronnie, you know, was so hurt by them leaving. And then the scene was so, that was such a cute, it was such a really cute scene when they were in the car and they were getting ready to leave. And then the song September came on. And I just, that's just a song you can't help but to sing along and dance to. So I love that part. I thought it was really cute and touching that they added that song in there. And then Ronnie, you know, he was still on a mission to find Keisha at that at this point of the show. So he told them that he may take them up on the offer later, which I think is the best thing for Ronnie because he's not doing anything in Chicago. I mean, he's like um, basically living. He's homeless, you know? I mean, he's not doing anything. So... Yeah, for him, that would definitely be an improvement to move somewhere where he can actually make money. They had commented that nobody was really hiring uh, them where they lived in Chicago. So, yeah, hopefully uh, Ronnie will take his friends up on that offer at some point, you know, and be able to go somewhere where he can make money and make a, just make a better life. I mean, he's too old to be living like this. But um, anyway, so... Ronnie also, oh, I forgot to add, he ran into, and, I, and I, I'm not going to remember her name right now, but he ran into Emmett's mom, and they kind of like, because you guys remember before, he was going to take her out, but he ended up getting drunk, and then he acted a fool in her house, so, I mean, that was it, she was done dealing with him, so he ended up, I mean, they ended up kind of like, I guess, burying the hatchet, like, kind of like hashing it out a little bit. But not really, but just kind of like, I feel like with the conversation they had, and she was like, you know, I don't hate you, but it's not like we're going to be, you know, hanging out or friends or anything. You know, I'm just cool on you kind of thing, but I don't have anything against you, really. You know, it's, it's kind of like you're just like a non-factor, but you do need to get yourself together. Because she kind of like talked to him about drinking because she saw him drinking at the bar um, and then after their conversation, he did kind of like tell his friends that he was going to try to go straight again. So something she said sunk in, which was great. Um, and then uh, the best part, um, well, you know what, before I get to the best part for me, I want to talk about, um, let's talk about Kevin and his little girlfriend. I, there's a lot of chemistry. They like each other, obviously. Kevin is just going through a lot, and I think that's why he also took her, um, you know, in getting out about his sister. I think he took that really hard, too, because he's going through so much, you know, and his sister's not there. I think he's a little bit more sensitive than he normally would be, but I, it's obvious he does like this girl a lot, and it's so cute, and they're just so cute together. She has her little fro, and She's so cute. I mean, they're just such a cute couple. And he finally, you know, I feel like when he's with Jake, too, Jake does not like her. So it kind of makes it harder. So she finally caught him alone outside of school. And basically, she invited him over to her house to hook up. And I was like, whoa, little fast girl. And um, they get to her house. And, of course, they're stopped by her father. And uh, the father is like, could tell that, you know, they were up to no good because he, Kevin was sitting there reading a book upside down. And the daughter was like, oh, we're just studying French. And it was a geometry book. So the dad knew that they were like doing something, you know, they shouldn't have been doing. And so the dad said, you know, he made Kevin come with him like immediately. And he just kind of was like grilling Kevin. And then at that point, Kevin got an emergency call. He had to leave. And I just thought, wow, you know, that was just very interesting because it, it just was really interesting. The conversation, like the dad was like, you know, basically calling him out and then it just cut it and he had to leave. It just makes me think, like, how is that going to work now? Because no father wants... Um, you know, a guy around their daughter that's trying to sleep with her. So I'm, I'm curious to know how their relationship is going to go now. 
um, you know, when he tries to come back around the house again and how is he going to get back into her dad's good graces. So I'll be interested to see how that goes. They may have to like sneak around for a while. I don't know, but we'll see how it goes. And then one other scene I want to talk about is Papa. I love the way Papa, Papa is just, the way he treats, and now I can't even remember, why am I forgetting everyone's name? You know, the, the girl that Papa is dating, his girlfriend, the way he treats her is so cool. Like, I just love the way he treats her. Uh, he's such a nice kid, you know? And just he just has such a big heart. And two things with him. One, when he told his dad, I love that he was in there and he was trying to uh, you know, get money to help. Oh, Maisha, that's her name, Maisha. I love that he was trying to help Maisha's family. Not necessarily that he was trying to steal from the collection plate, but, but um, it was good that he explained to his dad why. And his dad was a little hesitant, you know, and then when he kind of like called his dad out, like, well, what about all that money that Camille gave you? And blah, blah, blah. And how, what's the Christian, basically saying, what is the Christian way? Because the father was telling him, I'm so happy you have a you know a good heart. And he was like, Well, what kind of heart do you have? You know, and it's true, because the dad's supposed to be the pastor, and he was and Papa was the one that was trying to um help the family out. So, anyways, Maisha's um because Maisha's mom lost her job, <sighs> Lord, this is crazy. Maisha had to stay home. Maisha's mom has a ton of kids. And she lost her job, so Maisha had to stay home and babysit while her mom go out to look for a job, which meant that Maisha couldn't go to school. So Papa was just devastated, and, you know, that's where it came from, where he was trying to help her and take money from the church's money to go, you know, help them pay their bills, I guess. And it worked. They ended up bringing them a ton of money. Uh, well, it looked like a ton of money. I don't know how much it was, but I know Camille had gave the father a lot of money. In an envelope so it looked like that I'm not sure that he gave him all the money but it, he gave them quite a bit because you could tell by the way the mom was looking at the money like it was a decent amount of money so they ended up going over there and giving the money away and you could just see that my Isha was it was so cute because you could just tell she was like that's my man he loves me you know you could just tell she felt like this sense of love from Papa and that this boy genuinely loves her because he came over and he really, you know, with his father to give them money to help them out because they need help, you know, obviously. So the mom was being proud. She didn't want to take the money, but then she, you know, they were like, they're, they're basically they were not going to take no for our answer. And they said, we're leaving the money here, whether you want it or not. Well, that's what Papa's dad said. And then they pretty much left and, I think after, you could just tell the mom just was like not used to having support. And that, you know, I read so much more into that. And it's, it's it was kind of touching because she has all these children. I didn't see any man. I've never, you know, I've never seen a man, you know, or her, even Maisha talk about a father or anything like that. So it's like, wow, these two men are coming here and they are supporting me. They're not, you know, hurting me. They're supporting me. And it was just, you know, I read more into that. And I thought it was pretty deep, that scene, too, because it was kind of layered. You know, the mom, it was almost like a sigh of relief. You know, finally, you know, some help, you know, because she's probably been needing help for years and been struggling to raise these kids. And, you know, then she loses her job. She loses her job. And it's just, you know, one thing after another. And she's, you know, she's probably like, finally, some good news. So... At the end, you know, I think the mom was relieved that she got the help. But you could tell she was really prideful. And she did yell at my issue. I was like, why did you put my business in the street? Blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, sometimes you have to swallow your pride. You need help, you need help. And if people can help you, it's better than, like, keeping your daughter out of school where she needs to begin an education so she can better herself. So, yeah. Anyways. So she ended up taking the money. She's going to keep that money. Trust me. Also, the last scene I want to talk about is, um, uh, do I want to, no, I'm not, you know, I'm going to leave one, I'm going to leave the one out 
I'm going to leave one of the scenes out that I was going to talk about. I'm just going to move right to Ronnie. Ronnie, you know, Ronnie was walking. He was doing his normal looking for Keisha, knocking on doors, people slamming the door in his face. Like, no, you know, he wasn't getting anywhere. And then this nosy neighbor who every neighborhood needs, <laughs> who knows everybody, knows everybody's business, you know, just sitting in the window, looking, you know, know everything. She was like, what you looking for? Who are you looking for? These people not going to help you. And uh, Ronnie was like, I'm looking for a girl. And then she, he basically told her that that dude, the one that has Keisha, told him that the scream, he heard a scream and he felt like it was Keisha. And she, he was telling the lady that the guy said it came from over across the street. Well, the lady, and then he was just basically asking the lady if she knew the guy. And he, she was basically saying that he was touched, like he was special, like something was wrong with him, you know? And Ronnie, you know, he was like, well, what about his wife? Because the last time when Ronnie went over there, you know, as you guys know, Ronnie, he told Ronnie that he had a wife. And the lady was like, he don't have no wife. And that was it. You know, Ronnie knew because basically when Ronnie was there, he already heard the screaming. But he just kind of like talked it off that he was hearing something because he didn't know for sure, you know. This guy's talking about he got a wife, you know, he has a nice place. He just felt like, nah, it couldn't be this guy. But then once the lady told Ronnie, the nosy neighbor told Ronnie that the guy didn't have a wife, he was like, oh, hell no, you know? And then Ronnie broke in. He went to the back, it looked like the back of the house. And he was like, he broke in to the gate to get, you know, to the house. And then, um, he broke into the house. He got a crowbar and he just broke in. I mean, Ronnie, you know, he's been out here on the streets. He know how to break into a house, I guess, because he broke in, broke in there. And then he was like in the house, walking around. And then he started calling Keisha's name and she heard him. And it was like, oh, my heart just like, oh, it was just such a relief. But then at the same time, I'm like, is he even going to make it? You know, I, I was so, my heart was beating like, oh my God, is he going to kill him and her? And luckily this guy didn't have a gun or anything with him. He just, he drove up, Ronnie kicked in the, or Ronnie knocked, uh, broke in, but left the door open. So the guy came shortly after Ronnie had broke in and he saw his door open. So the guy snuck in. I think the guy was kind of thinking maybe Keisha escaped or something. Um, but yeah, so he came in and he was like slowly walking down the stairs and then he saw Ronnie, you know, and of course he, of course he hit Ronnie and everything. And Ronnie is thin and kind of like, I don't know if he's sickly, but you know, he just had a rough life. So Ronnie's not the strongest person. He's kind of frail. So it wasn't too hard for the guy to kind of take him out. And then um, Keisha jumped on the guy's back and he threw Keisha and he just, he was over there like arguing with Keisha talking about all the stuff he did for her, blah, blah, blah. And then Ronnie, Ronnie tried to run up on him while he was over there, you know, like chastising um, Keisha. And then the next thing you know, he knocked Ronnie back down because again, Ronnie is not exactly, you know, strong, you know, he's like older. He's, he just weak, you know, but he was doing the best he could. So Keisha, when he, uh, when the guy, the crowbar, uh, Ron, Ronnie had a crowbar um, that he, of course, that he broke in with. Keisha got a hold of that crowbar. And let me tell you something. It was a wrap. I mean, it wasn't like when she hit him with that um, chair uh, stick. It was over. She hit him enough because he his back was to her. So she was able to get a good enough lick in to like, have him fall you know what I mean it was it impacted him that's what she needed to him you know he needed to be impacted to where he was like taken out for a minute so she hit him and she just kept and I was like yeah I was screaming yes 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 because I'm like man please don't let her just hit him one time and then he get up and just get both of them I was so worried that she was just gonna hit him once and it was gonna be like oh you know he ended up getting, grabbing the crowbar from her and hitting Ronnie and then keeping her so no, she knew, I think she knew in her heart that she had to take him out. So she did. She kept hitting him until he was gone. And then she ran outside. But when she ran outside, I was like screaming at the TV because 
she was not running. Like, I'm like, girl, you are a track star. Run, get as far away from this neighborhood as you can. Run, run, run. But then I realized, okay, so somebody had called the police or something because shortly, because she was walking slow. I still, at this point, we didn't know if the guy was really, really gone. Of course, it seemed like it with as many times as she hit him. But you know how sometimes crazy people, they, they can take a lot and they still come after you. So I'm still worried about that. And I'm like, Ronnie's still in the house. And I felt like she was walking way too slow for what was going on. I mean, I know she was like devastated, but she was like walking slow, smelling the air. And I'm like, girl, do that later. Just run. I wanted her, I was just like, please run. But it all worked out. The ambulance came. And then, um, yeah, that's it. She got out of there and Keisha's free. But, oh my gosh, she is traumatized. You guys got to remember, she was down in that basement for like two months. And that guy was doing God knows what to her. She was snatched from her family. He had her with that same tracksuit on. Remember, he had a camera on her even when she goes to the bathroom. It was just horrible, like just horrible living conditions. So, you know, she was in the hospital. They were doing all these tests on her. It was so touching when she reunited back with her family. You could tell they were upset, confused, and, you know, like happy to see her at the same time, but then emotional. I mean, it was a lot. And they all were like super emotional and super just like, man, it was just a lot. And so uh, you could just, I could see in Kevin's eyes too that he was like, who did this? But you could tell Kevin was ready to get that person, you know? Because of course the family, don't they don't know everything that's happened yet. They don't know that the guy is gone and that what she did to him. They don't know all that. So right now, it's just kind of like, you're just like, what? Anyway, and then Ronnie, they, they show Ronnie. Ronnie was in the hospital as well because he got beat down by the crazy man. So Ronnie was, uh, you know, in the hospital. And it was like a special moment that Kevin actually, because, you know, Kevin can stand uh, Ronnie because of everything that happened um, in, the, in the past with Ronnie uh, taking out Coogie. So um, he came and he said, you know, thank you to Ronnie. And that was just, Ronnie was just crying. You could just tell, like, for so long, you know, he wanted these, these kids to not look at him as a monster. You know, like, for so long, he wanted to redeem himself. So he just felt, you know, overwhelmed with emotions when Kevin thanked him. And then... Um, Oh, Lord, when they got uh, Keisha home, it was just, like, crazy because it was, like, you could just tell when she, I feel like when she was in the hospital, she felt not safe, but a little bit safer, but just being in the confines of, you know, being back in the city and then just back in the neighborhood and then back in the ho a house. I think something about that triggered her because... When they got home, the mom went to kind of put her arm around her and she like flinched, like, you know, and the mom just like kind of backed up. And, and you can just tell this is going to be a long process, you know, and they're going to have to really be patient with Keisha because it'll be a while. And um, they were like in the room with her or what have you. And then they said they were going to let her get some sleep. She immediately put like a chair behind the door. Oh, first she made sure that window was locked. She checked the windows made sure they were locked. She put like a chair behind the door and then she went and grabbed like these scissors. And all she did, she sat on the floor, like, like she was in the military, you know, like waiting, ready for war. And she had like her, the scissors in her hand and she sat and she just looked at the door like nervously, you know? And you could tell this poor child is just traumatized. Like, man, you could just, it's going to be a while before she can get it, you know, like really together. Yeah, and then the mom, you know, the next day, it's like the mom, you know, they realize, you know, she had come out the room. I think they just know that they're in store for it, but I think it's going to take a toll on them. But right now, I feel like it's they're so happy to have her back that they're not even thinking about that right now. But I really feel that this whole thing with Keisha is going to be having some kind of impact, on, a, a huge impact on the family, too, because I, I think she's going to be a handful deal with after all this trauma and I feel like Dre I think it's gonna definitely gonna affect Dre 
And I don't know how much longer Drake is going to be with the mom. You know, I don't know if this is going to cause uh, any kind of rift because I don't know. I, I don't know how this is going to work with Dre and then Keisha. Because, you know, before Keisha got, you know, taken, she couldn't stand Dre. So I don't know if this going to, you know, I don't know how all this is going to play out. Is Keisha going to start, like, back up with her hatred for uh, Dre and start, you know, acting out, you know, it's, it's a lot of ways this can go and, you know, not bad and, and bad. <laughs> um, finally, one thing I did notice, too, is Kevin. Now, Kevin is very um, close to his sister. And it's like you could just tell Kevin is going to be a handful, too, because it's almost like he was he was traumatized as well because of the thought of his sister being gone. So it's going to impact him as well. I feel like he's going to also start acting out, you know, and he, I think she's going to have her, Nima going to, she's going to have her hands full with both of her children because I think just dealing with Keisha and then dealing with another teenage boy who is, you know, definitely, Already going, already just going through things because he's a teenager and, you know, being rebellious, just being a teenager. But then couple this with all the stuff that they dealt with, with Keisha being gone for two months, I just feel that the kids are going to be a handful and that's going to be a mess, you know, for the rest of this season. I think there's like three episodes left, but then next season, I feel like it's going to play out too. And we're going to see those kids doing the full. And we're going to see a lot happening with those two. You can just, I, I can just feel it coming. But anyways, guys, that's it. That's my review of The Shy. It was a great episode. I'm so happy Keisha's back. And I will really try to, um, you know, review next week. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.